Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga and today I would like to show you the one more game of the Ostende 1907 tournament. I show you already two games, um, but this is the last game from this tournament, so I would like to show you also the table. As you see, uh, Osip Bernstein and Akiba Rubinstein, um, they were born in 1982 in the last quarter of that year, so uh, both of them were the rivals. 19 and a half points. Uh, and they finished this tournament as the first ahead of Jacques Mises, Aaron Nimcovic, Richard Teichmann, uh, Saviery Tartakovers, Nosko Borowski, Blackburn and so on. Uh, so definitely huge success of Akiba Rubinstein and he started to be recognized as a really, really strong, uh, respectable player. And I would like to show you also the game uh, against uh, Rudolf Świderski. Rudolf Świderski was very interesting a uh, person. I I mean, uh, he, for example, is known as a person, or maybe not known, but now you're gonna know, uh, who invented Marozzi Bind. And he played against Marozzi. So most of the players probably think, okay, Marozzi Bind probably was invented by Marozzi, but not. Uh, the bind means that Marozzi actually was tied. So uh, playing c4 against Marozzi uh, made Marozzi in the very, very difficult position in his Sicilian defense. He didn't know how to play. He won that game. Uh, and in the future he played, I found only one game where Marozzi played against Sicilian, the Marozzi bind, the Świderski idea. However, until now, this is well known as the Marozzi bind. So just uh, interesting about Świderski. Uh, he was a very strong player. He won two games against Chigorin. Uh, so he had a positive score against Chigorin. He won uh, versus Blackburn. Death, Black, uh, also very famous. Older player at that time, but still very dangerous. And he won against Aaron Nimcovic from the top players. Uh, these were the one of Rudolf Świderski. Uh, also, we have interesting note in Frank Marshall when he traveled through Europe, uh, he wrote of all the chess masters I ever met, Świderski was the most weird. Uh, Świderski and Passau was a peculiar fellow. He made very few friends, had a gentle but melancholy disposition, was a fine violinist, ate raw meat and committed suicide a few years later. So this is what we know uh, about Świderski. So very interesting person, very strong player, uh, 23rd in the world. According to the chess metrics, he's ranking 2,593. He was 28 years old and he was uh, playing as black in this game. And his opponent, of course, a well-known Akiba Rubinstein, uh, number six in the world, 2,715, uh, 24 years old, as I said. And in this game, he's going to play as white. So without further ado, let's see this a very interesting and also very educational game. So we have d4 by Akiba Rubinstein and nothing fancy here. We have d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, queen's gambit declined, a pretty standard stuff. Bishop g5, bishop e7, e3, knight b2, d7. We have knight f3, we have castle and queen c2. Rubinstein variation. This is Rubinstein variation in the Queen's Gambit. So he starts to play and learn how to how to play that. Uh, and now a couple of ways of how to play that. Nowadays we know uh, C5 is the most aggressive, as the most popular also. C5 is possible, A6 is possible, preparing the moves like, like the B5. Also B6 with the bishop on the on the b7 this is also possible uh, h6 is well known move uh, however in this game we have d takes on c4 so what usually black do is play one of these moves because black want to wait uh, and win the tempo whenever white starts to move this this bishop then black gonna take on the c4 this is the the main idea this is why uh, c6 and a6 are the very very popular uh, moves as well but we have d takes on c4 Sviderski say okay i don't care you're not gonna uh, you know lose the tempo here we have bishop c4 and now immediately c5 we have rook d1 uh, we have c takes on d4 and nowadays we have at least uh, 20 games in the database most of them ends with the knight d4 knight d4 the most solid way and of course we're gonna have symmetrical pawn structure so it's gonna be very very difficult to actually you know uh, find some advantage uh, also rook d4 is is 
possible, but we have e takes on d4. So Rubinstein voluntarily wants to play with the queen's pawn, isolated queen's pawn, uh, and of course you need some skills to do that. Now, the main idea for white have a very, very active uh, gameplay, so the knight want to come to e5, maybe sometimes sacrifice somewhere on e6, and also have very, very active pieces and try to attack straight to the king. Uh, from the other hand, what black want to do is block this pawn from advancing and sacrifice, for example, on d5. Sometimes this pawn even can become the passed pawn and can be very, very dangerous. So blockade of the pawn is uh, one of the important strategies. Another strategy is exchange as many pieces of as possible and then in the end game win this pawn and then win the end game uh, rook end game or maybe the queen end game uh, you know with one extra pawn not always possible but that's the main strategies here uh, after e takes on d4 we have a6 so preparing b5 and bringing the bishop to b7 we have castle by akiba rubinstein b5 as planned bishop b3 uh, bishop d3 nowadays is more popular to move the bishop to this diagonal but at that time Sometimes uh, Rubinstein and other masters played uh, bishop b3 uh, with keeping the bishop on the uh, pointing on the on the e6. We have bishop b7. We have knight e5 now. And now, if the knight is taken, of course it's possible. Uh, but then uh, Black gonna fix the pawn structure. D takes on e5, knight d7. And after exchanging, we're gonna have this position. Still very complicated. Um, a lot of things can happen. White can, for example, try to jump um, to the d6. Uh, also, what White can try to do in if this if this pawn is under attack in the right moment can uh, can bring the resources and uh, protect the pawn and uh, stabilize the pawn on e5. And this pawn is sometimes a very very unpleasant for Black. It's control, for example, f6 and so on. So. A lot of ideas here. White probably uh, have much easier game, but it's black also are not uh, without the chance. For example, Stockfish sh shows that uh, black have, you know, uh, advantage here. Not big, but uh, slightly better for black. So that was possible. However, we have knight b6. So Sviderski want to simply uh, follow the main idea, exchange as many pieces as possible. We have rook f to e1 and now the main idea knight f to d5. So the, the knight of course defend on d5. We have knight d5 uh, and now black have to be very careful. For example, how to exchange the pieces. You cannot just exchange, for example, this bishop. Uh, that would be uh, losing because after knight b6, we're gonna have this beautiful fork. So that's not possible. So still, you know, it looks like very, very solid position, but both of the sides have to be extremely careful what they are doing. We have knight d5, bishop e7, we have knight e7, and now rook e3. The idea is very simple. Bring the rook to h3. Maybe bring also the queen uh, to the to the h file and then try to checkmate the, the the opponent. So we have rook c8 now kicking the queen, queen d3 still staying on this diagonal. Uh, and now what black could play here? Uh, two important things: uh, knight g6 or bishop bishop d5. So counter this this bishop, for example, bishop d5, and after rook h3 knight g6 uh, and continue the game probably exchange this bishop so that is one of the ideas in this position and another play immediately knight g6 and after knight g6 h takes on g6 and still black have a lot of uh, time to actually uh, continue however we have queen d6 it looks like okay the normal move we connect the rooks uh, we improve the position of the queen however it's not that simple because white actually have the chance in this position to make very unbalanced game. So for example, a knight f7, this is pretty interesting. And after rook f7, bishop can take on e6, so win this exchange. So uh, what white would have is the rook for two pieces, but rook and two pawns for two pieces. So it's not like, you know, it's winning continuation. However, um, Swiderski had to be aware that this is this continuation actually is possible. Uh, but Akiba Rubinstein didn't see that this is attractive and he played rook h3. He he goes for the pawn on h7 and checkmate there. We have knight g6, 
we have knight takes on g6, h takes on g6, uh, now rook h4 making a space for the queen, we have bishop d5 now countering the bishop and now queen h3 threatening the checkmate in one move. So we have of course f6 making a space for the for the king to f7 uh, and now rook h8 anyway, king f7, rook f8, rook f8 and now rook c1. So Rubinstein is first uh, who got the rook to the, to the only open file. Uh, so it looks like uh, white is doing pretty well. However, keep in mind what Świderski did after bishop b3 and queen b3, he exchanged all the minor pieces. That's the first thing. He also managed to exchange the pair of rooks. So this is another thing. And Rubinstein stays with this isolated pawn, which is definitely a weakness. So huge problem. After rook d8, this pawn is almost impossible uh, to defend. Uh, but Rubinstein found a way. So first a4, attacking the pawn, and it's attacked twice. So if this pawn is taken, then of course white gonna have this uh, passed pawn. So very attractive for white. This is why we have b4. We have rook c4 going after this pawn, also defending the pawn on d4. Uh, and finally a5. And now white have to be very careful. Uh, for example, uh, if playing something like queen e3 looks pretty logical, okay, defending the, the pawn, but e5 and this pawn cannot be exchanged on the e5 because we have the uh, weakness on the first rank. So that would be the checkmate. So probably queen g3. And after e takes on d4, even the, the queens are exchanged, it's still uh, white have to deal with this pawn. So yes, definitely the king can come and try to help, but also keep in mind that the black king is much closer. Uh, and there is no way that the rook actually um, take the pawn on a5, and uh, this pawn would be much more dangerous than, than the pawn and counterplay on them on the a file. So Rubinstein this, didn't see that um, you know so attractive. This is why he played g3 first which is pretty good move making a space for the king uh, and now we have g5 very subtle move not only making a space for the king in the case for example if black takes them the pawn uh, and we would have some checks then the king always can come to g6 but also uh, Swiderski actually started to plot a very very interesting mating net very subtle uh, and here Rubinstein actually what he could do uh, because definitely this pawn gonna be lost so he could go for something like queen f3 threatening maybe queen h5 so probably g3 then b3 uh, solidifying the position and after queen b6 now going uh, after this pawn simply queen e4 defending that and now e5 is not that dangerous so this probably would end in a draw however that was the best what Rubinstein could actually um, do however he wants more imbalances and he played rook c5 now rook c5 saying okay you're gonna take my pawn, I'm gonna take your pawn, I'm gonna have a passed pawn and I'm gonna win the game with that. And Świderski say, okay, let's see how you're gonna do that. We have queen d4 and now keep in mind that if Rubinstein changed his mind and play something like queen c2, defending the rook, also taking care of the of the d file, then we would have queen d1, queen d1, rook d1, uh, king g2 and now rook can go, go to d5, uh, defend the pawn so this pawn don't, cannot be taken and black gonna have four pawns against this three pawns so definitely much easier end game um, for black maybe Rubinstein could fight uh, for the draw but th that would be very very difficult uh, but of course he was he was really really great in the uh, in the pure rook end games However, Rubinstein went for rook a5 saying, okay, let's see what do you have here. I'm gonna have this pass pawn. I'm gonna win that. This is a huge asset. Also, uh, I can take this pawn and win the game. But this is the time where you can actually pause the video and find the winning continuation for black. Pure winning continuation for black. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So it's not that easy to find it. However, you have to know that if the queen goes to e4, it's gonna control all the squares where the white queen can go. So for example, look at this. Queen e4 controlling this square 
and this square this squares were available for the for the queen now they are not and also uh, all the squares around are actually controlled by the black pieces so look at this all of these are controlled uh, by black so the queen is completely stuck the only way for the queen is on a2 also the rook is far far the, away from the action so there is the problem and now the weakness on the first rank is not that dangerous but dangerous enough to win the game so queen e4 was played by Sviderski. he spotted uh, the tactic immediately i hope you too congratulations if you found queen e4 this is the best it's actually winning move in the position Rubinstein tried to bring the, the rook to the defense, however, it's too slow. Rook a7, king g6, now we have rook c7, the rook can come to the, to the first rank, but this is too late. Queen e1 with the check, king g2, and now rook d2, attacking f2, and f2 cannot be defended. Can you believe that? Uh, you cannot bring the queen to e3, because of queen e3 is winning. Uh, so Rubinstein play queen f3, but it's not helping because after rook d1 rubinstein resigned shocking end shocking end and rubinstein went for this pawn this was completely wrong plan by rubinstein he missed this powerful queen e4 move and he lost that game but he won that tournament he could win this tournament you know uh, only by himself if he just draw this game uh, but yeah this is he wanted to win and this is what happened and he resigned because all he can do is actually take the rook and of course with the queen against the rook he is in the lost position if he tries something else it's still losing but you you don't have even uh, any good moves here whatever you play it's is is completely losing uh, queen b7 making a space for the for the king but it's still queen f1 uh, this is the only space for the king king f3 now rook d3 and now you have only two squares in both of them you are checkmated uh, queen e2 this is one checkmate and if king g4, then of course f5, this is also checkmate. So as you see, this pawn controls very important squares, very subtle mating net by Sviderski. So uh, interesting game and interesting that Akiba Rubinstein went for that. He missed that. Uh, he played very beautiful and very strong uh, rook endgames. He never make any mistakes in the pure rook endgames. But the queen is far more dangerous. And the queen together with the rook, as you see, it can be... Uh, uh, extremely dangerous as well so uh, that's another lesson for Rubinstein just go straight to the rook endgame and then you're gonna do better there and then you're gonna master that and the queen can be sometimes very very tricky so if you like this video press like if you for some reason you don't like it press and like and if you don't want to miss other games from Akiba Rubinstein's lives and saga press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one